Okay, so now we're going to look at a few features of our overall thinking systems that are have been widely studied and are really important for understanding the nature of human cognition in general. And this uh, example is has a lot of lessons here. So this is called the Wayson card selection task. And you've got these four different cards and you know that the cards have a number on one side and a color on the other. And you wanna turn over the minimal number of cards in order to test whether the following rule is true or not. So we don't know if this rule is true for these cards, but this is the test. If there is an even number on one side, then the other side must be red. So if you want to test whether that rule holds for these cards, which cards do you turn over? Do, 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 do. What do you think? Well, you probably don't turn over the three because it's an odd number. And this thing doesn't mention anything about what happens with odd numbers. So it doesn't really matter. Uh, if you flip over the eight, uh, that's an even number. If it's not red on the other side, well, yeah, then it's going to be, uh, the rule's not going to be true. So you definitely want to flip over the eight. And almost everybody says that. The other thing that people say is, well, this thing mentions red. We should certainly flip over this red card, right? doesn't say anything about brown, so we don't really want to flip over the brown card, just like we don't want to flip over the three. So we should flip over the red card. But if you think about it more carefully, you say, well, wait a second. If I flip over the red card and it has an odd number on the other side, like five or something, does that actually make this rule false? No, it doesn't actually say that if one side is red, the other side must be even. It says if it's even on one side, then the other side must be red. Okay, but it doesn't say that if it's red on one side, it must also be even on the other side. And in fact, if you think about this brown card, if you were to flip over the brown card and uh, see that it had an even number on the other side of that brown card, like the number four, for example, uh, that would actually make the rule false, right? Because it says if, if, if it's even, the other side has to be red. Well, this is brown, so if it's even on the other side, that would invalidate the rule. So in fact, the right answer is eight and the brown card are the ones that you should flip over. But very few people get this answer correct, okay? And you kind of have to work through the reasoning to figure out you know, what the right answer is. But the key point is, if I ask you the exact same question, but in a different context that you're familiar with, you get the right answer right away, okay? And so here's this example. Uh, the rule is, if you're drinking alcohol, you must be over 21, okay? Who are you gonna card, okay? You don't card the old people. That's like carding the people who are like the red card here, so to speak, a different meaning of the word card but you don't look at the ID for the people who are old, okay? Because they're fine. They could either drink or not drink, it doesn't matter. Um, what you're gonna do is look for these brown cards, these kids who might be drinking and you're like, uh, sorry, you are not old enough to drink and therefore you are gonna violate the rule. So it's very easy to see in this concrete example who you wanna you know, check the IDs of. And this is, illustrative of the broader point that is absolutely true, that people really like to think in concrete, familiar contexts. We like to use things that we're familiar with, and we can be very sophisticated in our reasoning about situations that we're familiar with. But if you turn that into some kind of more abstract, kind of logical, mathematical kind of problem, then we really don't do very well. Okay, and this is because our brains fundamentally are still these kind of knowledge-rich, crystallized, posterior cortical, parallel neural networks. We know a lot about the world. We have these really rich internal models of the world. We think we learn these through this kind of process of predicting what's gonna happen next, and we kind of soak up all this information about the world. And so if you ask us questions about, you know, what's going to happen in the real world, 
we can be really sophisticated and smart in ways that we don't even know how smart we are. But if you ask us kind of really abstract, logical kinds of problems, we don't really do very well at that because we don't think that way, okay? That's not what most of our brain is devoted to. And so we do have at the very kind of extreme level, this kind of ability to be something like a Turing machine, something like a, a digital computer, but it's just at the very tip of our abilities, okay? It's not what comes naturally. What does come naturally is this ability to reason concretely about situations that we're familiar with. And so this, this has many implications for how you write papers, how you talk to people, how you explain things. You always wanna use concrete examples to make things clear like this example here. Um, and, and you always wanna think about you know, specific cases. This is why people are so attracted to anecdotal kinds of reasoning, right? We love anecdotes. Politicians, you know, they bring up a specific person who has a specific experience to their big speeches and they talk about that specific person and, and that's a kind of anecdotal kind of reasoning. Um, we're really bad at general, statistical, abstract, logical kinds of reasoning and we love specific cases. We love anecdotes. And, and that's really how our brains function. We think about the real world, we live in the real world. It's really important to understand the implications of that for, for all aspects of, of persuasion, communication, uh, teaching, everything. And this is an example of the broader uh, issues of kind of cognitive biases in human cognition. Now, this field is very important and has a lot of implications for understanding you know, the policies and the limitations of human cognition. And the overall idea is that we use these things called shortcuts or heuristics, uh, kind of rules of thumb, uh, instead of doing kind of the more complete, thorough, logical reasoning of particular problems. So we're not good at statistics. Uh, and, and instead, again, we, we, we rely on these shortcuts.